in one of the most rose tinted articles I've ever read in my life. And I hate to admit it, I actually pay for this site. It's called sketch.com. Uh, and the guy behind it, I think his name is David Harper, uh, seems like a fine enough fellow. And I'm not saying go make fun of David Harper or go out there and uh, chastise or anything. But every, I don't know, six months or so, he comes out, he talks to some of his comic book retailer contacts. In this case, I think it's 11 stores. And takes the temperature of the room. How are things doing? You know, how are things going? Are things good? Are they bad? Now, last year, he really couldn't deny that things were bad because that was basically the tenor almost entirely across the spectrum of people he talked to. But this year, things are looking great because only 40% of the comic book shops he talked to, our sales are down. That's the great outlook. That's the big glass is half full takeaway from this thing. And it's one of those things you know, as an analyst and as an intelligence analyst, I did this for the U.S. government for like 16 years, something like that. Like you have to remove yourself from the information to provide unbiased analysis. When you look at these things, the way that he cages all the information that he's given by these comic book retailers and the way they express them, he always cages it in the most positive light possible. But if you actually just take out his words and his feelings about it, you can actually see what's going on here. And it's certainly not quite as bad as 2023, but it's certainly not good when four out of the 10 shops are reporting that their sales are down. There's another shop out there that's not really a comic shop. It's a manga shop. I don't even know what he's talking to them, but they're a new shop and they didn't have sales data for 2023. So really we're talking about sales analysis from 10 different stores. And you can see the big winners out there. And I can understand why people would be positive if you were a comic book retailer, Ultimate Spider-Man, is a big hit. The other Ultimate stuff so far has been pretty damn good. The Inner John Universe is a big hit. The Red Band stuff from Marvel, which I do think these guys will loathe within two years, has been successful. So there are some successes out there, but we're also seeing an enormous downturn in popularity and interest in DC comics. Remember all those Spawn books that went out there? According to all these retailers, no interest in the second and third round of Spawn books and basically the sales really weren't there. So there are good things and there are bad things. But when 40% of your shops are reporting lower sales, that's a bad thing. I don't know how you can spin it to being a good thing, even in comparison to a worse 2023. It's not going well. But I will let you guys decide. And I will say this. Like I said, it's a pay site. You can sign up for like a year or whatever. I'm not going to go through very much of the information because it is a pay site. And there's probably... I'm probably covering like 5% of it. It's an enormous article with lots of very, very biased <laughs> analysis of the information. This is the best way I can put it with it, but it's up to you whether or not you want to subscribe to Sketch and support uh, David Harper. The opening salvo, when I knew this thing was going to be real bad, the easiest way to express how different this year has been so far is in how many shops were either comfortably up or effectively level with where they were the year before. More than half the retailers I talked to fit into one of these two camps and sometimes with great enthusiasm. So over half means 51% effectively up to like 66% because then you say two thirds. And as an analyst, I always assume it's closer to 51%. So I knew it was probably more like 55, something like that. Turns out it was more like 60, but he's grouping together success sales up with not success sales flat and comparing them to big not success sales down. So right there, the, the amount of shops with sales down versus the ones with sales flat, which isn't a success and sales up is barely over half defeating that. So that's already my little numbers thing. My head's going, whoa, that can't be good, despite them trying to spin it that way. And it turns out four shops reporting increased sales and two shops reporting uh, flat sales. And like I said, this isn't an enormous sample, but it does kind of feed into some of the things that we've been talking, especially with the success of DC Comics. Absolute power not appearing to be an enormous hit at this point. Decreased interest in Batman and stuff like that. That these numbers aren't good, but you can cage it if you start putting things together that don't belong together and comparing them to the worst possible outcome, which is sales down. So that's the information that we do have. Now he tries to spit it like sales being down might not be the worst thing. Only four have seen decreased sales so far. That was Challengers in California's current comics, Cape and Cal Comics and Comics Conspiracy. All three West Coast retailers largely echoed Brower's 
this is fine attitude about the first half results, even if each offered their own flavor of it. Ryan Higgins of Comics Conspiracy has seen a return to around 2019 sales numbers, something he described as sustainable, although he admitted they obviously missed those extra sales. So that's pretty crazy. The four shops whose sales are down are saying, oh, this is kind of fine. Things are getting hot, right? We got a few hits out there. Things are going to get better. And I completely understand that mentality. When you're a small business owner, you've invested your blood, sweat, and tears, your soul into your business. And things aren't doing quite great, but maybe you'll be able to get through it. You know, you can take a this is fine attitude. But saying that you've returned to 2019 sales numbers is awful. What's the enormous thing that's, that's affecting all of us, especially if you're in the United States, but even me here in the Philippines, that's affecting me. That's been happening since 2019 and, and ongoing since then. Inflation. Of course, inflation is always happening. And in order for those 2019 sales numbers that apparently are even with 2024, in order for those numbers to be really in line with 2019, they needed to be a 15% increase to keep up with, with the increased rate of inflation, which means your energy costs are up, your rent costs, although it's probably likely like a controlled cost because he probably has a lease or whatever, but those costs are going to go up. Employing people is going to go up. We know that they raised the minimum wage and all that kind of stuff in California. So the cost to run the shop are up, but your sales are the same as they were in 2019. That's not fine. <laughs> and I can understand Ryan Higgins, who I don't personally have a lot of respect for. I think he says a lot of really, really stupid stuff on social media and kind of makes himself out to be basically an ass. But if I take that away from it, that's really not fine because your sales, in order to meet your 2019 numbers, needed to be up at least 15% based on uh, standard inflation. And I imagine in California, it's probably even worse because of the, some of the governance that they've done there has been absolutely uh, just devastating to small business owners, from what I understand, what I've read up on that kind of stuff. So say, taking a, a this is fine approach is fine for, for the business owners themselves. But if you're actually looking at this and you're wanting to take a temperature of the room and how the comic book industry is doing based on comic book sales at comic book shops, that's a bad thing. You know, saying that we got to 2019 sales again isn't exactly inspiring confidence, you know, in the industry that things are going really well. And I understand that, that you know, the individuals themselves can say this is fine, but when you're making an overall a look at it and you're looking at how things are doing, that's not fine. That's actually really bad. That's two out of three that are performing worse, you know, year over year. And we know that 2023 was devastating. You would hope that most of these shops had a big time uh, bounce back and at a minimum remained level because 2023 was so bad. And that's not what we're seeing, at least in this very small sample size. So I don't know how you can really cage that and be like, oh yeah, things are really rebounding. It doesn't appear that they are rebounding, not at least across the board. And, and that's not good stuff. Another thing that they identified, I guess, is a good thing. Big Bang saw a noticeable decline in active pull lists this year, as they currently have 15% fewer single issue subscribers than last year, according to Bautista, Bruno Bautista, the owner, I believe, of Big Bang Comics, or maybe he's the manager. He's one of the leaders at Big Bang Comics in Dublin. But the disappearance of these regulars has largely been offset by new customers ordering other things like manga and graphic novels, which the retailer will happily take. That matches one of this check-in's main themes. Many of the negatives have positives balancing them out, at least to some degree. And for Big Bang Comics, that is good. It's good that even though they saw a decrease in interest in single-issue floppies and people pre-ordering and paying for those, it was mitigated, made up for, by sales in manga and, and graphic novels and stuff like that. But on a whole, if that's a trend that's going on a lot of places, that's actually pretty bad because we're not talking about the manga industry and the health and survival of the manga industry. We're talking about comic shops, which certainly sell manga, but their primary product mostly is going to be comic books themselves, you know, and being offset by graphic novel sales. Where do most of these graphic novels actually come from? They're collected trades of individual comic book issues. If you can't sell the individual comic book issues, you probably can't do trades. There won't be any anymore. So you actually really need 
more interest in the single issue floppies that actually drive that direct market when it comes to uh, graphic novels and stuff like that, when it comes to American comic books. Now, obviously, there are some graphic novels that go out there that are still popular, like your Ed Brubaker and stuff like that, that never, that never reached the light of day as uh, single floppy issues. But when we're talking about superhero comics, when we're talking about Marvel and DC image comics, the bread and butter, the stuff that Big Bang Comics and other comic book shops are really uh, dependent on, the fact that there's less interest in single issue floppies, maybe not across the board, but certainly uh, it's being reported there and in other places as well. But they're being mitigated by products that aren't that. Manga isn't comic books. Manga are Japanese comic books. That's a different market, and that's money going to a different place. And that's its own niche entity, and there are manga shops out there that certainly don't rely on DC and Marvel sales to make up any gaps for them, whereas a lot of comic book shops are having to do that. So we're seeing this weird evolution to where, what, what is it Aaron calls them, uh, geek bodegas and stuff like that, to where the comic book sales themselves, the interest in Marvel and DC that they're driving, are not strong enough really to sustain a lot of places as a comic book shop main focus. You know, a lot of times the comic books are being moved to the back of the shop, into the corner, maybe up into the second floor where never went, no one even knew it existed. And you're seeing other stuff in the front of the store, like your manga and maybe tabletop gaming and, and stuff like that. So I can understand from Bruno Batista's perspective, you know, it's good. We made up for those sales by this happening elsewhere. But if we're having to make up those sales across the board, that is showing decreased interest in comic books and decreased sales, which kind of falls in line with a lot of what we're seeing kind of an, as an across the board trend, especially with DC comics. I don't think a lot of people were talking about how great they're doing. Now there were some real hits out there that, that they focused on and a lot of people echoed the same things that were massive hits. And it's nothing that you would be surprised about far and away. The biggest success has been ultimate Spider-Man. It was described by retailers as a total juggernaut and a certified hit with Alsafi's manga centric shop, even struggling to find a ceiling for the series and its sales. Trite said it's outselling its main universe counterpart, Amazing Spider-Man 3 to 1 at Now or Never, which is a staggering number. If Ultimate Spider-Man is 1A for shops, then Transformers is 1B. Bautista described the title as Ultimate Spider-Man's only real sales competition with the two running neck and neck at the top of Big Bang's bestseller list. And that's great. Obviously, Ultimate Spider-Man deserves the accolades. You got Jonathan Hickman, you got Marco Cicchetto, a real superstar pairing on that one. And they're doing good stuff. You know, there's a couple of issues there. And I was like, come on, we can do better than this. But on the whole, it's been good. It's certainly more exciting than Amazing Spider-Man. And while I don't think most shops are experiencing a three to one or two to one Ultimate Spider-Man sales to Amazing Spider-Man sales, it certainly appears to be wiping the floor with Amazing Spider-Man. You hope that people that were reading Amazing Spider-Man continue to read Amazing Spider-Man and get Ultimate Spider-Man. And you hope that the increased interest in Amazing Spider-Man or Ultimate Spider-Man, I'm sorry, you know, allows people to venture out there and go find new comic books. But there aren't a lot of really good Marvel books right now. I mean, did you read Ultimates this week? Talk about an absolute whiff. <laughs> like, I'm going to have a review up here on the channel. It's probably already happened by now. But that thing was a stinker rooney. Ultimate X-Men isn't an X-Men comic book. So you're kind of left with Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate Black Panther. And Ultimate Black Panther is just a Black Panther book. It's not, doesn't feel different at all. There's a, just a few subtle differences. And while I'm very, very happy about Transformers, and I hope the longevity is there, you got Daniel Warren Johnson writing and illustrating that. Now, Jorge Corona has come on as the artist, and Daniel Warren Johnson is still writing it. Another superstar pairing, an IP that people are familiar with that's been really exciting, kind of going back to its roots and other uh, cartoons and stuff like that, but, but adjusting the story, making it really awesome. And I'm hugely on board with that. And I'm very happy that Transformers is doing awesome, and I'm really excited for G.I. Joe under Josh Williamson. Hopefully it gets bigger and bigger. So it's awesome that there are a couple of hits in there. You hope that these couple of hits allow people to go out there and taste out some new comic books. Maybe go check out Green Lantern and discover there's a really good Green Lantern book out there. But there aren't a ton of books like that. I would say Superman's kind of like that. Nothing really in continuity at Marvel is really doing it for me right now. I think it's just a real mishmash of, of terrible ideas going across, but it does appear that that's rubbed off maybe a little bit, at least at the beginning for Thundercats and stuff like that. 
So there are a few big time uh, winners kind of popping out there, but are they raising the floor sales floor for other titles out there? I don't really see that. I think people are just fans of Ultimate Spider-Man or they're just fans of Transformers and maybe uh, some of the, the Energon stuff with G.I. Joe and it looks like Void Rivals is doing well. But has Transformers made Ghost Machine a bigger hit? I don't think so. And that's kind of the market that we need to where people are so happy with the books that they're reading that are exciting that they can't get enough and they have to go find more. Unfortunately, Marvel is flooding the shelf with so much mediocrity that it's not even funny. And for some reason, DC is putting out like maybe half as many books as Marvel right now. And a lot of them are mediocre as well. But it's almost like DC doesn't have enough books. It's, it's the strangest thing going on. But then you also have to take like the source of where this information is coming from. Multiple retailers will talk about how great distillery was. Who's talking about distillery? Have you been talking about it? Is anybody even reading those books? What do you got? You got five people that buy all the distillery books? That's not a huge hit. That's a, you know, that's a average seller. You know, it's got some fans or whatever, but that's not moving the needle. You need needle movers right now. That's why 40% of comic book shops that are part of this poll, and it is a very limited sample, are reporting that their sales are down. And we're considering that a success because that means 60% uh, are up or flat, even though we know it's 40% are up and 20% are flat, and flat is a failure because we've had 8% inflation over the last year. You need your sales to be up at least 8% just to keep up with where you were the year before. So I understand wanting to be positive and, and all that stuff, but really, if you're going to do this kind of analysis, like you have to take the personal biases off, you have to take the rose-colored glasses off, and you have to look at the information for what it is and actually talk about it, what it is, and what it actually means. Because for each different shop, it's going to mean something a very personal and individual to them. But the reason you look at a larger sample size is because you can remove those personal biases out and actually get a good feel of what's really happening. Are some shops doing great and doing better than ever? Absolutely. No doubt about it. Are far too many shops doing worse? <laughs> Absolutely. Way too many shops are doing worse. Way too many shops have gone out of business. And that's unfortunate. And it would be turned around if Marvel could back up Ultimate Spider-Man with a really badass uh, two or three more titles. You know, a really good X-Men title or something like that. It would be awesome if, if DC were putting out a really great Batman book that allowed people to discover Green Lantern and Superman, which are pretty damn good right now. It would be awesome if Transformers was raising up and allowing people to go and sample Ghost Machine right now, because Rook Exodus is awesome. <laughs> you know, go read uh, Geiger, go read Redcoat. They're all really good books, specifically Rook Exodus. But that's not what appears to be happening, and that is troubling. You do have to take these things with a grain of salt and really realize what perspectives are coming from. I'm not trying to say that comic books are in the worst position of ever. You know, Marvel's not about to go bankrupt. That would be a, a very bad thing. You know, DC didn't cut half their line all at once because there was a severe storm. You know, uh, this isn't the 90s bubble where everything burst and all these shops went out uh, of business. But it's not good either. <laughs> Interest is down almost across the board. And yes, there are some hits out there, but they're not making other comic books hits, which makes me feel like the market isn't nearly as healthy as a lot of people would like to pretend or wish that it was. If you'd like more coverage on this and the entire health of the comic book industry, I do want to say we have awesome stuff going over on Think Critical Patreon. If you want to support Think Critical YouTube over there, we give you lots of extra podcasts. There's a link in the video description if you want to help support us there.